Hello, my name is Samantha, my pronouns are she, her, and I have decided to film a reading vlog for the month of April. It is now April 4th, and I am currently reading The Last to Vanish by Megan Miranda. I have not read her before, and this one is about, so the main character works at a lodge, like a inn or a lodge, in a small town that's, um, I don't know what state it's in, but it's near the Appala Appalachian Trail. And so it's it's a popular place for like camping and hiking. So it's a small town, but they, they do good business because of the, um, the I, I don't know if I'd say tourists, but visitors to the lodge. And she works there. And the curious thing about this town is that in the last 20 years, they have had eight hikers go missing. And it seems like, as in never been found. So it's like, well, was there an accident? Was there foul play? Did they just leave on their own maybe? Like it's, it's not really clear is my understanding. Anyway, the novel starts then with the brother of one of these missing people, the, the most recent missing person as of like, a few months, maybe six months ago, his brother goes missing. So he comes to the lodge sort of to get closure, sort of to try and figure out what happened to his brother. And for the first 20, maybe 25% of the book, nothing really happens. It's really just setting up the setting and the backstory, which is obviously important, but nothing happens. And then, so I'm now a third of the way in. And we, ha we do have our first reveal, our first clue, our first direction to head in. But I, I'm still not sure about this one. I am going to give it a little more time to see what sort of developments develop. But if it's not really grabbing my attention, if I'm not really into the story, I might start out with a DNF. So we'll see. We'll see. It might turn around. It is the next day, April 5th, still reading The Last to Vanish by Megan Miranda. I'm now about 50% through. Still, not much has happened. I just finished a chapter, and there was technically, there was another reveal, but I don't know what it means. Like, I agree that it's interesting. I agree you need to look into that. I, I can't tell you anything other than that. So I don't, what reaction am I supposed to have? I don't know. Like, there's a good setup in there that I feel like the author's not really focusing on. Because they have mentioned, like confirmed, that it's not just that these seven people have gone missing. It's that they have never been found. Like, no bodies, dead or alive, nothing. That's, like, that's what I think needs to be pressed here. And it's, I feel like it's like, they're like, yeah, never been found. Never been found. Like, let, let's, you know, push on that a little harder, maybe. And I also feel like the stakes are not very high at this point because no one is currently missing. And the guy who's in town to look into the disappearance of his brother, the most recent person to disappear, he like he's looking into it, but he's not really making it a problem for anyone else in town. So I just keep I just keep waiting. And I'm like, well, how long how long? Am I going to wait? Like we're 50% of the way through. And even if the second half is really good, or there ends up being a really good explanation, twist, great story, does that make up for the first half being literally there's nothing happening? I don't know. So I'm continuing to listen to the audiobook as I'm working. I'm at, I think, 87%. And... I, I'm still processing. What? I don't... Okay. Obviously, I'm not going to tell you what the reveal was. Processing. I'm not sure what this reveal means. For the... I know what it means. I don't know what it... I don't know how it fits into the whole... The story overall. I don't know. Like, it's a very big puzzle piece. I just don't know where it goes. I'm now at 93%. I wanted to give a short update before I finish the book. 
So there's been a development of some sort, basically, without giving any spoilers. So she finds out that someone knew someone else, that there was a connection there that she previously, she didn't know that they knew each other. But she's kind of freaking out about it. And I don't, I don't really know why. Like, I, it's relevant, but I, I feel like she's up here when I'm like, but are we up here yet? So we'll see how it all comes together. So I was trying to decide between one or two stars. One meaning I didn't like it. Two meaning it was okay. I went with one. I didn't like it. I didn't like, I mean, it's, I don't like to be starting this video on such a bummer of a feeling about a book, but I just, I mean, it, uh, I wanted to like it. I read the whole thing. I finished it. So that's something. Yeah, so kind of a bummer to start a reading vlog with a book I did not like, but now we can move on to hopefully something I will like better. It's now April 6th. I've started a new book. It's called The Woman in the Library by Solari Gentle. I'm only about 10% in and I'm going to try and explain this book the best way that I can. It's confusing, but I'll do my best. So how this is structured is that each chapter, at least so far, I'm only 10% in, it's going back and forth between, so there's this woman who's writing a book and she's sending her friend chapters as she writes them. And then the friend is like giving her notes. So each chapter is the chapter of the manuscript, then the friend's notes, then another chapter of the manuscript, and then the friend like emailing notes back to the author of the manuscript. And the story in the manuscript is that there are these four people who happen to be in the Boston Public Library one day. They don't know each other. They just happen to be sitting near each other. And they hear a scream. And so the, like the security guard is every, you know, like everyone stay calm, everyone stay here, and then goes to like check out what the scream was. Doesn't find anyone in distress, doesn't find, it, like does can't figure out who it was, comes back, tells them like it's, everything is fine. You can go now if you want to, like that restriction is lifted. So they, these four people, like, you know, just start chatting with each other, you know, like, what was that? You know, I, you know, who, what do you think happened? Um, and basically are just, you know, spend the next maybe few hours, it seems like, just kind of talking with each other. They find out then later that night on the news that a woman was found dead in the Boston Public Library. So they all assume, well, that must have been the woman that we heard scream. Now, why she was not found when the guard went to look for her, that's part of the mystery. We don't know. But so then this group of four happens to meet up the next day at the Boston Public Library and are kind of get interested in wanting to find out what happened to this woman. Now, one of the one of the four people, the like the narrator character of the manuscript, also happens to be an author who is also writing about the events in the library. And then also has like a separate writer friend who, if I understood this part correctly, the author of the manuscript gave the character's friend the same name as the friend who is reading the author's manuscript and giving her notes. Like, I already have a headache today, like not from this, but this, I, it can't be helping. So I'm not, I'm not really sure about this book yet. It's, there's, there's intrigue, definitely. But there's just, it's stories within stories, books within books, which I like generally, but this feels a little complicated. This is like, there is a twist coming in here, in this structure somewhere. I don't know when, not sure how, but... It's got to be. So we'll see. I am at work. There's no one else here right now. I am just over 50% into The Woman in the Library. Big reveal about the friend. 
Okay, back home from work, now I can give some more details about what has been going on in this book. I'm now up to 72%. And okay, so I'd mentioned that there was a big reveal with the friend. And if that was confusing, by friend, I mean the friend who is giving notes on the manuscript. And I think I had mentioned or implied that the friend was a woman. It's not. The friend is a man. Anyway, so there was this big reveal about this person. It's opening up this new part of the book, but we're still only getting glimpses of it because the majority of each chapter is the manuscript, not to make it longer, but just to add depth to like, oh, this is now more mysterious what this person is, you know, choosing to comment on. But so, but the part of the manuscript itself that's bugging me is a character that is just making dangerous mistakes. And like, people make mistakes. People, you know, there are certain things that some people have just not learned. And that's, I mean, that's the case. But she, okay, so one of the characters has learned a an objectively concerning, some objectively concerning information about one of the other characters. And so they ask them about it and 100% completely, basically without any questions, believes their, that person's response and continues to trust them without, like without taking any time to look into it themselves to ask anyone, like to do any sort of research or ask other people questions, to consult other people at all. And it's just like, this is not the kind of thing that you just accept from someone you've known like a few weeks. And that's frustrating for me because it seems so clearly a mistake. And even if the person was being 100% like truthful and genuine and like it's not as dangerous as it could be, even if that is the case, that is not reason enough to just believe it. Because it might not be the case. It is April 9th and about half hour ago I finished The Woman in the Library by Solari Gentle. Also not good. Also not good. My second one star book in a row. This is unusual, I have to say. And I'm wondering if I've jinxed myself making this vlog, but I'm gonna press ahead. So yeah, it was it was unsatisfying. The so the story about the friend giving the notes, that it was there was real potential there. And I just feel like the author didn't do anything with it. Like it 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 was Yeah, you know? And then the story, like in the, like the manuscript story, like the who of the whodunit was unexpected, but then the book was basically over and I'm like, what? Okay. So one star. It is April 10th. Yesterday I started the Marlowe Murder Club by Robert Thorogood. I'm 50% of the way in at this point. Um, I've got about two hours where I'll be in the car today, so I'm going to listen to it some more. Um, so the setup for this one is that there's a woman in her 70s, and she hears a gunshot coming from her neighbor's house. So she calls the police, and like half an hour later, one officer shows up, like knocks on the door, looks in the windows, walks around to the backyard, and then leaves. And so she gets a call the next day from the police department basically telling her, like, an officer went by, he didn't see anything suspicious, basically, you know, there's nothing to worry about. And her reaction is like, well, you know, I'm in my 70s, but I know what I heard. She ends up finding the body of her neighbor, which then, of course, sets off a chain of events of her taking it upon herself to solve her neighbor's murder. She kind of... Um, gathers these two other ladies with her, who I presume then they are the Marlowe Murder Club. Um, 
yeah, so it, it has all the elements of a cozy mystery, but I don't know if I'd say that it's a cozy mystery. It feels a little bit different than that. But it, to be fair, it has all the elements of one. Um, I like all the characters, but I just don't feel that invested in the story. So, we'll see. We'll see how, how the next bit of the book goes. It is April 11th. Earlier this morning, I finished the Marlowe Motor Club, and I ended up giving it two stars. It was okay, which is what two stars means for me. Um, I do, so it is a series. There's, the second book just came out in January. There'll be a third book coming out. And I do think that if I knew the characters better, I would enjoy them more. And I did, I mean, I did enjoy them in this one, but like, you're just getting to know these people, so you're... I feel like I'd maybe care more about them, just knowing them better. Which, I think that makes sense. So, anyway, I ended up giving it two stars. I was... It was clever with how everything was done. So, I'll give it that, too. And then, after finishing the Marlowe Murder Club, I did start... Murder on Cape Cod by Maddie Day. This one I'm about 20% into, maybe a little under 20%. Um, this one is more of a classic cozy mystery, set on Cape Cod, obviously. Um, the main character owns a like a bike rental and repair shop, and she is walking home from book club one night and literally trips over a body. Um, so yeah, we're still at the beginning of this one. We don't really know what is going on, why he was killed, who might have done it. Like, there aren't really, there, well, no, there aren't really suspects at this point. So, just getting started, but it's a good setup so far, so I'm interested to see what happens. It is a beautiful 78 degrees out today, so I am enjoying the balcony. I'm a little over halfway into Murder on Cape Cod by Maddie Day. And I am enjoying it. Finally, thank goodness I am enjoying it. What is sort of unique about this one, now normally in Cozy Mysteries, the main character just sort of like fully just takes it upon themselves, like out of nowhere, to solve whatever crime has taken place. But in this one, she's sort of like insisting like, I am not a detective. This is not my job. I am not, I do not have the skills for this. Anything that I happen to come across, I'm giving right to the detectives. And she is doing that. On the other hand, the entire book club is involved in trying to solve this murder. So it's a balance. But it's fun. It's it's a very, um, it's a really cute small town. It, there's I like all of the side characters, like all the friend characters. I like all of them. So I don't know how many books are in this series, but I'll be, you know, um, I am interested in continuing with the series at this point. I am out for a walk at the park and I thought I'd give a quick update. So it's now April 19th. I finished two books and I'm halfway through a third. So I did finish Murder on Cape Cod. I ended up giving it two stars. I was between two and three, but it ended, the ending was sort of abrupt. Like you sort of, you find out who it is and then that's kind of just it. Which like obviously the, you know, the killer's always revealed right at the end, but usually there's more of a wrap-up. I then read and finished a four-star book, four stars, that was Sorted by Jackson Bird. This, he is a trans man. It is a memoir of him growing up in Texas and coming out in his mid-twenties. And it was really, really good. Like, if you're going to read a trans memoir, which you should, I recommend this one. And then I'm currently a little over halfway into Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. And I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'll give you more of a summary wrap up at home because there's someone else coming down the walking trail, but so I'll check in in just a second. Okay, so I'm back home. Again, that was a delightful walk in a new park I had not been to before, but was absolutely fantastic. Anyway, so before I get into Home Before Dark, I want to talk a little bit more about Sorted by Jackson Bird. So this came out a few years ago. I've been wanting to read it like since it came out. Because I had been, like, I've, he, among other things, um, makes videos on YouTube. And, like, I've been watching him since even before he transitioned. So being able to read this was really, really excellent. 
it's a ve it's very heartfelt it's very honest and I, I enjoyed it very much so like I said I highly recommend it so now Home Before Dark by Riley Sager have I read Riley Sager before hold on let me check Okay, I checked my Goodreads. I have not read Riley Sager before, but there are one or two of his other books that I have in my to-read list. So, my first Riley Sager, I'm... Uh, let me check what percentage I am. Hold on. Okay, now I am prepared to make this segment. I am 59% into Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. I am enjoying it. I wasn't sure, I wasn't quite sure at the beginning what I would feel about it because I was like is this a thriller or is this a horror book it seems to be both honestly so it's another one where there's a book within a book um because it switches timelines basically so okay <laughs> there's this woman who is I want to say probably early 30s her father has just died and he wrote a book about a house that they used to live in that according to the book was very haunted and it became like an international bestseller and so like they only lived in this house for 20 days before fleeing now it is true they lived in the house for 20 days and then left for what according to the book because it was haunted but she at the time hold on <coughs> am I gonna sneeze we'll see no mm -hmm. At the time they lived in the house, she was just five years old. She does not remember any of the events in the book actually happening. So, uh, and you know, she was five years old, but at five years old, and if that did happen, maybe you would remember it, but maybe it was too traumatizing. She doesn't remember it. Either way, she does not remember this time in the house at five years old for 20 days. And honestly, 20 days when you're five years old, I don't remember, I, 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 I don't remember much. From five years old so I believe her anyway so her father has now though passed away and apparently she learns still owns that house so it, it then c c comes to her in inheritance and so she then is uh, she runs a business actually for like renovating and like flipping homes so she goes there with the intention of kind of sprucing it up and then selling it if she can sell it like it's this house is known for being the house in this very popular book that her father wrote and so it switches in between so each chapter is her at the house and then it'll go to like you're reading her father's book about the house and the question of the novel is basically is what is in the novel did that actually happen like is is this house actually haunted or did he just make it up to sell a good uh, to sell a good book and there are some questionable things like some things start to happen to her that very s similar things happened in the book so she's really starting to question because she doesn't remember she doesn't know so it's both a thriller and horror. I'm now 72% into Home Before Dark. And so this will be a spoiler for the scene that I'm in, but I not overall because I'm just at the very beginning of the scene, so I don't know what happens. So it's basically a spoiler for a setup to a scene. Um okay, so this whole so we're in the section where it's like the you like we're reading the book of like the story of the haunted house and this whole time so basically so this house has like a history like since from the first people who lived there to the current owners things had not gone well so there's it has a long history with this house and so when these odd things are happening I'm like has no one thought of maybe just like talking to the house because, you know, other characters have, you know, have said, you know, the house remembers, which I'm on board with, has, but no one has tried talking to the house. And now, okay, there's a scene with the Ouija board. And I'm like, okay, well, but here's the thing. <clears throat> so the Ouija board is 
in the house from a previous owner who left it there. It seems like people seem to leave items in the house. They just go. And so he's going to decide to try and communicate with the house with um, an entity that he believes well I don't know if he believes but that might be in the house but not only is he using a Ouija board which I am undecided on whether that's a good idea because he obviously doesn't know what he's doing and here's here's the thing Obviously, I agree with, yeah, you should talk to the house or who might be in the house or what sort of energy might be in the house. You should do that. What you don't need to do is while, you know, setting out the Ouija board on the table is to turn the lights off and then light a candle. You don't need to do that. That is a mistake. That is a recipe for some bad vibes that you do not need to be adding to this soup of bad vibes. Yeah. I think it's going to be scary. It is April 28th and I have again finished a book and am most of the way through another one. So I finished Home Before Dark. I ended up giving it three stars. And so when it was getting near to the end of that one, I was like, I don't know how I feel about where this is going. But on the other hand, there's still like an hour left in this audiobook. And I, I trusted that and I was correct because there were so many, like, I don't know if twist is the right word. I mean, I think it is, but so many, like it, where you thought it was going, it went this way. And then you thought you it was going this way and then it goes a totally different way. And I was like, okay, I, I like where it ended up. So I had three stars. For me, that means I liked it. It's my most common rating. So three stars for Home Before Dark. And I'm now about 90% into Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers by Jesse Sutano. And I am enjoying it. And actually this one, so similar to, um, similar to Marlowe Murder Club, this is another one that has all of the elements of a cozy mystery but I wouldn't really call it a cozy mystery. And I'm not sure what this genre of book is called. So if you are familiar with either one of these books and you know what I'm talking about, what would you call this type of book? It's not not a cozy mystery, but it's not like other cozy mysteries I've read. So I, it's they're different things. So I, I don't know what to call it, but so this book is about a Chinese American woman. She's living in San Francisco and she owns a tea shop and she lives in the apartment above the shop. And one morning she comes down to the shop and there is just a dead body on the floor. And she decides to take it upon herself as it usually happens with cozy mysteries. Um, she is fully convinced that she is gonna be the one to solve this murder and or what she suspects to be murder. And so she makes a list of suspects, befriends them, basically, um, and then starts, you know, crossing people off the list. And so now we're at, there's like 10% of the book left. And I don't know who did it. Um, like, is it someone completely different that we haven't been, like that has not been on the suspects list? I don't know, but I wanted to film this update before I finish the book. So I'm going to finish it tonight and then I'll update you. It is April 29th and I have now finished Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers by Jesse Sutanto. I did say it wrong earlier. I said Sutano, it's Sutanto. So I have that correct now. I gave it three stars. I did enjoy it. I So we were getting close to the end and I was like, are they going to solve this murder? And they did, and it was really, I really liked the reveal of the whodunit, but I do feel conflicted about it. And I'm not gonna say why, because that would be a spoiler, but if you have read this book, I think you know what I'm talking about. But I did, I did really enjoy it, and I would also highly recommend the audiobook if you are interested to read this, because the accent that the narrator does for Vera as a Chinese American woman 
was so like I, I can't unfortunately I can't judge how accurate it may have been but I really enjoyed it so to summarize for the month I finished seven audiobooks let's see if I can remember them so I did last to vanish that was one star and then the woman in the library also one star but then we moved up to the Mar Marlowe Murder Club that was two stars and then I think it was sorted four stars and then home before dark three stars and then Vera Wong's unsolicited advice for murderers three stars did I leave anything out let me let me check I did leave one out it was murder on Cape Cod which I gave two stars so not the best reading month but I did enjoy filming the vlog and I do think that I'll do it again um, probably in June I think I'll switch off but do let me know if you have read any of these books if you are interested in reading any of these books or a book that you know of that you think I might like so I'll see you next time